Now, the next one I want to share with you is our graphic filter. And this one comes up a lot. Uh, users that are working on proposed surfaces make a, a pretty big mistake. And maybe this is on our, our part because fundamentally we taught some very primitive commands in the earlier releases of, of V8i uh, for open roads technology. So let's take a look at another recommended method. And this, of course, should be a standard that you employ to your organization. And this is, I'm going to go ahead and open another file here. In this one, I actually have, you know, the terrain, uh, its proposed surface needs to be collected for London Road. So let's take a look here. And so on that London Road project, Scott got the quarter model done, but, you know, I have to hand off a surface to the drainage team and some others. And so what we've already got in our file here, if I fit the view, let's go ahead and turn that view control, adjust colors, make sure we get those reset. There we go. What we have is I've referenced Scott's information. So Scott gave me the quarter model, told me where it was, and I simply referenced it. Now, there's a lot going on, and Scott was very consistent with his CAD standards, so there's an opportunity here. The thing is, Scott uses a lot of different standards and techniques in his modeling, and I simply just don't know all the elements. And this is where the problems come in. In many cases with the terrain tools, users were creating from elements for some of our quarter models. And it's not to say that that's not still acceptable. It's just not a best practice. It's not as powerful. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do is leverage a graphic filter because Scott has a lot of standards and he's gone ahead and taken advantage of, of utilizing our feature definitions in his various templates but I just don't know when there are different elements, and I, I certainly want to make sure that I get a successful surface to my uh, downstream team. And so when we run through this, of course, you can create a terrain from filter, and it relies on what's called a graphic filter group. Now, hugely overlooked by many is this filter manager, and you'll see as we deliver out of the box, we deliver many that, that you know, accompany the product in the examples workspace. We encourage you to take a look and look for inspiration in some of what we deliver. Now, in this particular instance, um, I have some various needs. Maybe I just need the proposed payment surface, and Scott's got a multitude of different symbols there that he's using that result in different features. Well, if I've got this set up in advance and I understand different elements, things like the proposed pavement surface, the interior brake lines, well, I can define those as actual feature type known as a brake line and even go so far as utilizing the specific civil features that he may be using from his templates to ensure that we're both consistent and, and, and uh, getting the same information. Now, we've gone ahead and, as I said, built some already, but how does this differ from the from elements? Well, it allows me the opportunity to catch things that may or may not be there. So I have an opportunity to apply a filter that if things change and Scott adds a bench or a break or maybe a, a different type of ditch, I simply just update the current terrain filter and it will grab the new entities, the new items that are within there. So this is actually looking for these whether they exist or not. And it's already assigned to that particular activity for the terrain. So. In this particular circumstance, let me drop out of that for a moment and make sure that I don't have that terrain anymore because I usually do. And we'll go ahead and delete that. So I already had one in my file. So the great thing about this is that as the template user and the quarter model is consistent, it also allows us to be consistent in capturing and delivering proposed surfaces. So for me, my my recommendation is to use a graphic filter group. I'm going to come in, and we already have one assigned here in this case on our project. We were told you know, to use the proposed finish grade. This is going to get from the daylight to daylight of this particular quarter model that Scott has built. And if I'm not sure, I can run a preview, and we can see all the candidate elements that it's going to capture grabbing all the linear items and using those as break lines. But more importantly, and many of us probably are aware, we've run into problems around these outside edges where they start to do some unusual triangulation. Well, that's where the graphic filter group comes in because in my case, Scott told me that the TC cut slopes 
need to be a boundary element. So when we go back to our terrain feature type, I have gone and assigned those particular features to come in as boundaries. So when we come through, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I set this up. Perhaps in this case, I want to see the proposed triangles. I'll go ahead and set that. And why don't I call this the DT of London Road? So when I go to satisfy that, I could even assign an edge method. I'll go and leave that off for the moment and just simply data point to show that we can, in fact, get that surface captured. But what's more important than that, it's actually being governed by this boundary. So these triangles will not do anything unusual, won't spill outside of that. Now, when we have gaps, of course, we're going to have some triangulation, but uh, we can come through and we can rectify some of those things as well. So, you know, keep in mind, we do have edge methods and some other operations. Um, of course, if I have a big gap like that, I might ask Scott perhaps to consider making two corridors so I can grab each one independently. But through some refinements, we can make some adjustments as well. So I can change these and also uh, affect some of the exterior triangulation. But more or less, um, you can see we're gathering every little entity, every little ditch, every little piece uh, for that surface. So uh, very good practice. So we can see it coming around those daylight edges exactly as I want. And if Scott changes his model, I simply open this file and it'll update accordingly. I don't have to repeat grab a proposed surface. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.